From Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering InterConnect 2017. Brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay for IBM's InterConnect 2017. It's the cloud and big data Watson show that's all kind of coming together. This is theCUBE's three day coverage, wall to wall, day two, coming to an end here. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Dave Lindquist, who's an IBM fellow, vice president of cloud DevOps and analytics at IBM. Uh, great to have you on theCUBE. Thank Thanks for joining us. Thank you, John. Thank you, Dave. So Good love to you. have the IBM fellows on because we can then like get down and down and dirty, right? Get down and talk about the tech. Um, I'll see Ginny's on stage today. I love the, um, the bumper sticker she has because she nails it. Enterprise strong, data first, cognitive to the core. Right. So enterprise strong means there's a cloud readiness equation going on right, right. now and we just came back from Google Next and hey, we got great technology, buy us. Oh, well, SLAs matter. <laughs> you know, being enterprise ready isn't always about the best tech no, no, it's and not. And it's about everything. It's the data, it's the, it's the machine learning, it's the software, and also those table stakes going on in the enterprise. Yeah. Unpack that for us. Sure. Um, well, I think a lot of what you just went through is at least part of the driving force between bringing ops into the dev space, this DevOps thing, and we'll expand on that in a little bit. But one of the big uh, pushes going on is really around um, site reliability engineering, and how do you appropriately bring the skills together with the development, development teams to really set systems up in elastic scale, uh, recovery oriented uh, compute, compute models so that you can scale out with the demand, you can recover from situations, you can recover from failures, you have a lot of redundancy built in the system. Uh, it, takes, it takes a lot of time for teams to mature, to understand that um, that aspect of delivering cloud services and delivering uh, applications into, into a, continuous available, a continuous available environment. What's IBM's formula right now is you guys ramp up and scale up the cloud, IBM cloud. You have the soft layer and that's now blue mix. So you have on the lower end of the stack, you got to get that hardness infrastructure, infrastructure as a service, and the platform as a service stuff. Then you start to bleed into the blue mix. You right. still one blue, blue mix now, but you got app developers. Right. They want infrastructure as code. They want data as code. Right. But then you got to have an uncoupling of set of services that look like one set of services. How hard is that? And what are you guys doing specifically to, to uh, Talk to customers about the value you're bringing on both sides of that camp. You know, the yeah. hard workload focused hybrid to the creative sizzle of an app. Yeah, well, a lot, lot in that question. There's a lot of parts, uh, a lot of parts <laughs> there. Um, one of the things that's clearly going on is taking that next step in loose coupling systems, creating uh, more independent services, uh, that can scale elastically independently of each other, the recovery oriented models, and then presenting those services up at the layers you mentioned, at the infrastructure layers, compute storage networking, into the uh, paths and container layers, so that the application developers can very rapidly get the environment they need, compose the services that they, that they need, like the runtimes, data, messaging, et cetera, uh, as a loosely coupled system, and then build their applications deployed uh, uh, to be deployed into that environment. How much innovation is going on? You're starting to see now a new trend where there's more hardware engineering going into some chips and hardware configurations that's essentially software driven. Right. To offload maybe machine learning, some other cooler things that can assist some of the hard, hard stuff that frees up more creativity on the software side. Um, say machine learning is a great example. You're starting right. to see uh, Intel and others start thinking, okay, let's put some stuff on a chip. You have 5G wireless, you got autonomous vehicles coming. A whole new hardware paradigm is kind of emerging with the cloud. Um, how do you see that playing out from an innovation standpoint? How does that strategy play out from a cloud and yeah, well, what, IoT? To me, a lot of the things that are so exciting that's going on in the cloud, probably the big driver in the cloud is this whole uh, acceleration of innovation. How quickly can you get from instantiate an idea in field, iterate in field with your users towards a business outcome, and as you hit those outcomes, start scaling and expanding that out. And a lot of that innovation is building on some of the things that you mentioned, big data, cognitive, IOT, social, how you start bringing these things together. And so as you bring this together real time, you clearly need 
uh, just uh, exponential growth occurring in com compute capacity, which is probably creating, not probably, it's creating all kinds of opportunities for breakthroughs in algorithms and breakthroughs in, a, in a, the hardware to, su to support that. The other thing that. that we're seeing, I want to get your thoughts and commentary on, is how analytics is so compatible with the cloud, because yeah. it really, you're seeing that sweet spot developing nicely. And also with cloud native trend is booming. Right. You're seeing cloud native, cloud native uh, compute foundations got big traction, and then the analytics is, people have no problem putting that in the public cloud, Correct. but yet they want the hybrid over here for some other stuff. So the workloads are starting to settle into their swim lanes. Your thoughts on the DevOps equation as analytics moves to the cloud, uh, not exclusively, but you know, for the majority of cases, and this cloud native trend that's coming down the pike. Yeah, so break that down in a couple pieces, the cloud native trend as well as the anal analytics trend. Cloud native trend, what you see is a lot of development with microservices. And part of what makes that um, so exciting is the culture of the teams and how they come together. You're basically seeing small teams, small integrated teams, often called two pizza teams or squads, where you'll pull together designers with developers, with tests, with data science, um, with business uh, insights, business strategy into a, into a team that then works together through the whole life cycle, iterating incrementally and delivering in, in field to, uh, as they move towards that business outcome that they're trying to achieve. So what cloud native is doing is allowing, that microservice model is really allowing many of these teams to work re with relative autonomy, but accountability for their service as it comes together to, to, to bring the system, the full system together. What we're learning is that, um, one, you get a lot of speed like that, but then you start to, you, not, you need a level of analytics um, to help understand how that's coming together through that whole life cycle. And what I mean by that is, you know, how is the testing coming along? So everybody needs to start adopting more continuous testing uh, from uh, unit tests, right, right, uh, performance testing, availability, right into um, security testing. So you start running basic simple analytics where you start gathering on how the teams are doing in the continuous testing, and you can start setting soft and hard gates. For example, a soft gate might be um, code coverage is dropping, so send an alert mm -hmm. to the team to say you got to step up the code coverage. Hard gate might be um, a, a security scan failed, so stop the deploy. And so that's a yeah. basic set of analytics, but yeah. the fun areas, to me, the exciting areas, we're starting to apply much more sophisticated models are in understanding code health and how the teams are actually working together. So you start de developing models. It's almost like team chemistry and coding working exactly. together. It's like, hey, you guys are good. You know, you're in the zone, you yeah. know? you're in the coding zone. Yeah. No, but this is a good point. I want to highlight, just, just stop on that one point. I want to just drill down. I think that you nailed something that we, we've been kind of teasing out and this, you, you put it into words. The cloud native trend around microservices, you mentioned teams working together, right. with maybe some shared analytics or, and kind of code health team, you know, scoreboard right. or whatever. This is way beyond agile. Yeah. I mean, agile's been a term that's been talked about inside companies, hey, let's be agile. You're talking about a fundamental industry reconfiguration of players. Yeah. So this yeah. is like a whole nother yeah. ball game. Yeah, it, it, to me it builds on agile, what's going on. It does build on. It goes beyond. It's, it's but, it goes way, but it goes way beyond. And, and even you know, the early thinking in DevOps, I think we're really pushing the envelope when we, when we still call it DevOps, because we're thinking of the broad life cycle of, of uh, you know, design practices. How do you begin to understand your users and what you're trying to accomplish with your users? Then you get into you know, continuous integration, delivery, and testing. But then where it gets real interesting is you start instrumenting everything, and including you know, getting direct line of sight insight into how your users are using what you're deploying. And that causes the ability to pivot very rapidly, daily, weekly, and to dry, you know, guiding where you're going to take your next iteration. So to me, that's what's really taking this way past what you typically saw in an agile. So what's happening to this traditional IT function, and how is it adapting? Um, you know, is it, is it bimodal? Is there abstraction layer coming in? Is there, is there a, a, an equilibrium being reached between old and new? How would you describe what's going on? Yeah, fascinating question. What, what I often see in, in most of the enterprises I work in is they have a couple of investments going on. They're on a journey, a dev transformation journey, and a lot of that is you know, really at the core of it's embracing DevOps. But what you'll see is there's groups really pushing the envelope in these teams 
with cloud native, microservice development, really all about speed. How quickly can they take small teams, get the idea into market? But then what you also see going on is large sets of very valuable assets, the data transactional uh, systems. And how do you start embracing more and more automation to really reduce the cycle times, improve the service levels, and to um, effectively start taking costs cost out of that full equation, that full life cycle. So what, what you're seeing is a lot of automation coming into the existing IT environment. Um, you're seeing a lot more of, of taking down of the silos of ops and, a, and development teams, and that's going on in the, in the, in the core areas. And in the more um, cloud native area, you're seeing it's actually a common team put together, and they basically own the whole spectrum, they build it, they run it, they, the, the whole you would, piece. You would think the competitive implications of this are huge. I mean, without naming names, are you at this point able to discern patterns where organizations that are implementing this type of approach are becoming more competitive, becoming more profitable, gaining share? Do we have enough evidence of that yet? Uh, yes, um, and well Gene, we were talking about Gene Kim earlier, and you can see from a lot of the breadth of the studies he has, that you'll see how much more effective and high performance you're getting out of teams that are really embracing uh, the best practices of DevOps, and it is translating into financial, uh, financial results. Um, so you are seeing that bridge occur. But part of what uh, got, got me thinking about is what we were talking about earlier, the, the uh, analytics that we've been exploring in the, um, in the team insights, yeah. and how the patterns you see and how teams are interacting in their code and you know where where are the the core 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 committers the uh, extended community and the extended community out the, the extended ring outside of that you can begin to see patterns that are working well patterns are starting to have problems it might actually be it's an a self-healing concept too, if yes. you think about it. This is actually taking into like, social media is the same problem. On, on Twitter, everyone's with the same exactly. voice. Exactly. And even you could have a zillion followers and not have any influence, or have you know, 100 followers and have a lot of influence based on, that's no measure for that. Right. You're getting at something that's more scoring oriented and analytical. Yes. That's interesting to me. We don't follow up on that maybe another time. The question I want to ask you, because I, I can't get it out of my mind, is because you, you mentioned the cloud native has got me kind of really you know, riffing on this. We believe it's a multi-cloud world, right? right? And there's going to be a variety of clouds, not a winner take all. Um, and they're all going to have differentiation. But having the traverse clouds is going to be really, really important. So Kubernetes is kind of interesting to me because you're looking at Kubernetes really kind of coming in and saying, hey, we could actually be a factor right. in orchestrating and managing the sets of micro containers and microservices. Right. And so it's almost like a whole nother land grab is going on around Kubernetes because it's so delicate. All right. Can you share thoughts on that? Because it's kind of nuanced. Kubernetes has is, is got great traction in, in containers and microservices, but it's super important. Right. Why is it important and, and why is it fragile or is it fragile? In well, the sense of its importance and not, not to be forked or uh, tweaked. Yeah, well, um, one, first, it's growing very rapidly. The use of containers uh, for, for development and building largely cloud-native uh, microservice um, applications um, is, is growing at a very rapid rate. And then the ability to set up these kube, kube clusters in different clouds to be able to take advantage of the characteristics or services that are are, are, are in those different clouds, including you know maybe you want to set up a cluster near where your data is so you can have yeah. the processing local to that data. Maybe you want to set up clusters around certain uh, security or privacy or regulatory uh, policies. So Kube is really um, providing almost a platform-like layer for the containers uh, that is very robust. I wouldn't say it's fragile. And it, but with that flexibility to setting that up, and where you, where you want to set up that. It allows clouds. customers to really figure out where to put workloads that exactly. matter. So exactly. IoT would be a great use case for exactly. this. IoT say, Perfect. hey, you know what? This cloud is awesome at this and put, the, put that app over there and this one goes over here because it's got something over there that I like. But now you need to have, 
Right. I mean, is that kind of where, this is like interoperability of networking in like the 80s. Yeah. I'm a 90s when that whole trend started booming, is really its importance. Yes, yes. It's openness. The op well, the openness is critical. The, uh, a lot of what we saw in distributed computing and the connectivity uh, um, between the clusters will be critical. Yeah. Um, but I do want to get to that point you mentioned on the openness. To me, the openness is critical from a number of dimensions. Um, one, one uh, certainly for interoperability and portability, but probably the most important is the rallying point for innovation. It, you get these ecosystems and with open technologies, which really is an open governance with open standards, you find a lot of creativity and innovation occurring within that base. And that to me is what really causes these environments to explode and take off. And if they can take that openness into the data level, yes. then you're going to have a perfect storm of innovation. Yes. Because now you got open source, which is thriving. Right. It continues to be great. Tier and, one, and, by the way. And right. you're choosing to invest so much and give back so much to the community. Not everybody does that, right? Right. but you've made a business case for that. Why, why that strategy? I mean, it's IBM, you would think, you know, historically IBM, very close, but you are, are almost overly aggressive about your open source yeah. investments. Yeah, and not even sure it's historical. It dates back a long time, quite a while no, that's ago. That's true, you we, go back to all the way to Linux. The Linux, right. was, they, they were the right. main player you, in Linux. You go back, yeah. obviously the internet itself, sure. TCP IP, yeah. Linux, Java, yeah. Eclipse. Yeah, the track record's all, amazing. To me, all these um, industry breakthroughs, things that shape the industry, are often at its core there were, at critical places, there was an open ecosystem, an open governance, open technology that really enabled it to just expand and, and grow at I a I think blockchain rate. is perfect for you guys blockchain right now. Blockchain is another yeah. great yeah. example. Of, and in my, people might be saying, oh, a little bit early. I think that bet is going to be playing out well. Right. <laughs> if you take the open source and this whole digital value thing, very interesting. Yes. Well, I mean, final thought. What are you excited about right now? I mean, as an IBM fellow, you get the canvas. Uh, within the tech space. Obviously, a lot to pull, it's kind of intoxicating these days. We kind yes. of went down memory lane with some old ways, but there's a ton of great new things happening. Yes. What are you excited about? I mean, what's, what's getting, uh, getting you buzzed up about this, the current tech scene? Um, the, the things that are really, I find fascinating, exciting now, is the different ways we're learning to apply uh, AI, cognitive machine learning, into the different systems. Um, we just sort of covering it just a little bit in the DevOps space itself, but we're learning to apply it from the from the from the end of test to understanding how we can predict where we have problematic code files and how you would improve your test or skills to the other spectrum of how how is the community actually operating? Is the community healthy? Is it growing? How are my projects and my teams? working together, how healthy is that? Or are there issues that I have to start looking at? Do I have a design issue, an yeah. architecture issue, a squad issue? So I can start doing that. This is all, we're learning how to take in big data yeah. and apply machine learning to this to get these types of insights. And to me, you know, that's just one yeah. spectrum of how we're applying it. But that's to me what's so exciting is how we're applying it, you know, some of the examples that were shown with blockchain and cognitive yeah. and an IoT and, and, and AI. Data's changing the game. The algorithms are coming out um, as more like libraries, not as custom stuff. And you got compute over the top. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, exactly. <laughs> I wish I was 15 again, you know? <laughs> oh man, I wish, uh, what a great time to be in, uh, in the tech industry as a computer it, scientist it, it, or uh, any kind of science field right now. It is it's a great just, time. Super time. Appreciate it, Dave. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Dave Lequist, IBM Fellow, Vice President of DevOps in the cloud at IBM, uh, sharing his insight, that great job. IBM's coverage continues here at day two here in theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Stay with us for our wrap after the short break. <laughs>